Lesson learned. Few lessons learned. One, that's it with IQ for me. I, I mean, I, you know, anybody who raises the IQ issue is hugely suspect. And in my perspective, the burden is on them. Don't trust them one iota, right? And, and, and I know there's some pretty prominent people, uh, and, and at least one who I don't think is racist, but, but pretty prominent people who've raised this issue. But burden is on them. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a horrible issue. It's a stupid issue, too. I mean, if you really think about it, um, if, you, if you tested people in the 16th century, people, I don't know, Ashkenazi Jews who score really high on IQ tests, in the 16th century, what do you think their IQ would be? If you give them the test from today, what would the IQ be? It would be very low. Of course, culture matters. Of course, culture matter, matters. And the idea that this is genetically, the idea that this is ingrained, the idea that this, is, that this relates to race, that this color of your skin determines your IQ, is just horrible. Ashkenazi Jews have become smart because they embraced a culture that elevates education and, and thinking and debating and argumentation and smart stuff. It's a cultural phenomenon more than anything else. And, and, and everybody who, who is going to, you know, continues to insist about, uh, you know, uh, uh, this being a, 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 an issue of race is, is, uh, is no longer, um, of course, tests are culturally biased. Of course, culture impacts test, right? Of course they do. I mean, is there any question about that? You have to be completely blind and evasive to not see that culture plays a role. Just take any test that you give today and give it to somebody 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, and you will see that, they, that you get wide different responses. Why? Because the level of knowledge, the culture, the attitudes, the perspectives are completely different. And that's why you know, standardized testing is, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not for standardized testing, never have been. I'm for private education with real competition where different schools test kids in different ways. And universities, you know, maybe universities, each university comes up with their own test to give students. But biological determinism is ugly, it is disgusting, it is, uh, and it is, uh, it is wrong. It is wrong. And it is blatantly wrong. It's not a question of whether individuals are smarter than one another. Of course, there's differences in intelligence. It's a question of what determines that. And it's a question of whether you know how to measure that, whether you know anything about how to measure that. Anyway, we'll do, uh, we'll do the IQ. Uh, anyway, so one is IQ, one lesson learned. Um, second lesson learned is notice the quirks in somebody's position, right? Look out for the quirks. Look out the IQ, quoting, you know, or saying something positive about somebody like Ron Unst. Give a lot more weighting to things like that. A lot more weighting to the suspicious stuff. Um, and, and, and don't give people as much of a pass. I, you know, and, and uh, I should have been more alert to some of those issues. Anyway... I am now officially, formally distancing myself, not that I was ever close to him, but distancing myself uh, completely from uh, Hanania, from what he stands for, uh, and, and I hope um, many, many other people do. I, I hope uh, to the extent that he continues to hold these views uh, that, um, uh, that his career is destroyed and uh, that he is shunned. Uh, to the extent that he continues to be embraced by conservatives, That'll be an even uh, more negative sign in, in terms of our culture, in terms of uh, where our culture is heading. And, I, and I've said this before, and let me say it again just to be very clear. I consider racist ideas to be the lowest of the low. I consider them to be some of the most disgusting, horrible, horrific ideas possible. I, I, I will not, I have no interest in sanctioning, uh, being associated with anybody who holds racist ideas, right? And this is true of people on the right, and this is true of people on the left. If you hold this race 
as primary, I want to have nothing, zero to do with you. And, uh, and, and to me, this, you know, as Ayn Rand said, it is the lowest, most primitive form of collectivism possible. And I consider collectivism to be, you know, as, as low as it gets, right? Collectivism is the enemy, the enemy, it, certainly politically. So if racism is the lowest form of collectivism, I, I hate racists kind of in particular more than anyone else, right? Uh, I know exactly what racism leads to. I know the horrors that result from it. And I have no interest in any association with anything that is associated with them. And again, I, I, think, I think that, uh, uh, that uh, it, is a, uh, it is a phenomena that it turns out, and this is another lesson learned from this, uh, that is, uh, I think, bigger than, bigger than we think. I think it's a real, real problem in America. I think it is a real, real challenge uh, for American society, you know, particularly on the right, but it's being fermented on the left as well. Um, he has, he, we've got them, uh, you know, m m must have attracted uh, racism in the title, must have attracted some people. So, yes, so, uh, collectivism is natural, inevitable. No, it is not. It is the default state of an animal, not of a human being. It is the default state of uh, lack of cognition, of, of uh, somebody who stays at the perceptual level. It is the default state of not rising to be civilized and to be human civilization, among other things, civilization of the process of individuation, civilization is the process of identifying the individual as the value. Every civilization in human history that is worth anything was a step towards greater respect for the individual and a, de and a, and a, and a denunciation of the idea of collectivism. So collectivism is... is the enemy. It's the enemy of civilization, basically. It's the enemy of civilization. 99% of our history, we lived in collectivistic societies. That's right. That's right. The 1%, which is the 1% that matters, the 1% that counts, the 1% that actually achieved civilization, rejects collectivism. And I'm pro-civilization. You might be pro-savage, I'm pro-civilization. You can, you guys, I'm, I'm just responding to the chat. You guys can go and uh, create your own savage society and eat each other up and enjoy the violence. Uh, uh, me, I'm working towards civilization, which means individualism, which means cognition, which means the mind.